Johnny here. Right now I'm in the UNESCO World Heritage Town of Sucre on the edge of the Bolivian Altiplano. And in this short film, I'm going to talk about an exciting trip we offer from Bolivia to Chile. Starting in the country's largest city, Santa Cruz, the trip first takes us on a journey from the tropical lowlands via out of the way and seldom visited locations towards the Altiplano. Here we'll visit the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Samapata, the archaeological ruins at El Fuete, and the interesting village of La Higuera, where Che Guevara met his untimely end. From here, after a couple of nights in an authentic hacienda, we'll visit one of the country's true highlights. Declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1991, Sucre is arguably Bolivia's most beautiful town and it's considered the spiritual heart of the country. As the location of the first declaration of independence in the Americas from the Spanish in 1809, Sucre holds a special place in Bolivia's, if not the entire continent's, national psyche. Today it's a pretty colonial town with elegant administrative buildings, spectacular churches and monasteries, good museums and is famous for its silver and chocolate shops. There's also a very interesting dinosaur park on the outskirts of town where 65 million year old dinosaur footprints can be found. From here, we travel on along a beautiful mountain road to Potosi. Back in the 16th century, the Spanish conquistadors might not have found their El Dorado or city of gold, but they did discover the silver mines of Potosi. Out of the giant mountain, or rich hill as it's known, that stands above Potosi, the Spanish managed to extract enough silver to build an empire. The mine is still in use, extracting zinc, copper and what silver is left and forms one of the more bizarre experiences travellers can take. But if burrowing underground is not to your liking, the town, which was at one time reputed to be the richest city on earth with a population twice that of Paris, is still well worth a visit. It has an excellent museum created out of the town's old mint and some wonderful colonial architecture. And from here, we move on to one of the most extraordinary natural wonders anywhere on Earth. A highlight of this trip, and indeed any trip to Bolivia, is coming to the extraordinary Uyuni Salt Flats, the largest and most dramatic salt flats anywhere on the planet. The salt flats were formed 25,000 years ago when a seismic shift in the continental plates drained a vast inland saltwater lake, leaving behind a perfect white crystal plain of salt. At 12,000 square kilometers, it stretches as far as the eye can see, broken only by a few dark cactus-covered islands. But it's not just the lake itself that's so interesting. It's also about the people that live and have lived around it. Hiking up a ridge below Tanupu Volcano to get a better view, we were led into a cave. Here we found the mummified bodies of two men, two women, and two infants. Members of the Uruquila tribe that legend says made their way overland from Mongolia 2,500 years ago, our guide told us they were a noble family, probably farmers, that lived and died here 700 years ago. Today, people still eke an existence out of the land around them. Some farm llamas and quinoas on the lower slopes of the volcanoes. Others make a living from the salt itself, either by cutting it up into blocks for the building trade or for animal salt licks or by drying it out, crushing it up, bagging it up, and selling it as table salt. There are some wonderful hotels where almost everything is made of the salt, such as here at Luna Salada. This will offer a great place to stay, comfortable and spectacular. But Uyuni isn't only about salt flats, there's also a strange train museum. This is a train graveyard just outside Uyuni on the edge of the salt flats. These trains were brought in in the 1930s and 40s to help with the mining industry. Interestingly, most of them were made in Britain. Travelling on to Chile, over the high Altiplano, you're going to be in for a real treat. On this route, you'll pass by and visit some of the most magnificent natural wonders anywhere on the continent, including Giza fields, dazzling lakes of extraordinary colours packed with flamingos and important geological features. What you can see behind me is called the Colorado Fault. This is where the 
South America plate is crashing into the NASCAR plate. The Latin America one going above, the NASCAR going below, and it causes this huge gash in the earth. You're gonna pass through customs here on the Bolivian-Chile border at 4,400 meters. And finally, you're gonna end up here in the extraordinary Atacama Desert. Sitting in the rain shadow of both the Andes and the Chilean coastal range, the Atacama Desert is renowned for being the driest place on earth. It's also the region that has been driest for longest, with some suggesting a continuous arid area here dating back at least three million years. Some of the soil has no life at all, a situation that NASA has exploited to test instruments for Mars missions. And, due to its otherworldly landscapes, it's also been used as a location on numerous space films, including Space Odyssey, Voyage to the Planets. Forming the northern chain of Chile's Ring of Fire, the region is framed by a spectacular girdle of volcanoes and plethora of fascinating geological phenomenon. During your time here, you'll go for a good hike through the Salt Canyon, visit the Valley of the Moon, the high altitude geyser fields where you might like to take a swim in one of the thermal pools, and visit the Salt Range, which is the perfect place for a good sunset shot. And if the skies are clear, you'll also do a stargazing trip. The Atacama Desert is known as the best place in the world from which to see space. So the trip ends here in San Pedro de Atacama. From here you'll drive to Calama and fly down to San Diego and on either home or for an extension. But I think you'll agree, it's been a pretty epic journey.